This is very concerning about what might happen to Europe over the winter, but we are seeing natural gas and oil prices come down on concerns about a global um, recession. How do you balance these two things? What, what ends up weighing or taking more weight, and could both things happen at the same time? I mean, the natural gas story remains, I think, the most important economic story because Europe is really facing a serious economic crisis. If Vladimir Putin makes good on his threats to basically shut off Europe in terms of gas supplies, it's going to be challenging for these countries to make it through winter if it is a cold winter. Now, the Germans, a number of other countries have come out and said, we've built storage. We're building out our LNG infrastructure. We're going to be ready. But again, ready means you're also having industries having to cut back on output, especially energy intensive industries, steel, aluminum, fertilizer. Utility prices are going to continue to rise. It's going to necessitate governments having to spend more money to shield consumers from the impact of those price increases. So I do think that Vladimir Putin is playing a very serious game of brinkmanship with Europe on natural gas. We could be saying both things at the same time, though, right? Brink, brinkmanship yeah. when it comes to natural gas in Europe and potential serious problems there. But with WTI down closer to $80 at this point, um, is it a situation where it's a tale of two cities, perhaps? Europe's in big trouble, the rest of the globe not so much? I mean, I think this is going to be a really interesting question in terms of what happens on oil with these price caps. Because right now, you know, market participants are very concerned about recession. They're looking at the China story with continued COVID lockdowns, weak economic data. And they're basically saying the outlook on the demand side may not be great. The supply picture, we have this U.S. SPR release. It's going to be winding down. The question is, come December 5, are we going to have serious economic sanctions that pull Russian barrels off the market? Or will this price cap plan that the Treasury has been pushing essentially keep the market well supplied because Russian oil will continue to be on the market just at a discount? Do the Russians want to play along? I mean, they've said, you give us a cap, we give you a floor. So the question is, will Russia basically start with holding oil supplies going into that decision? Do they potentially disrupt other countries' output? And what does OPEC do? We had this OPEC meeting on Monday. They did this micro cut, but they said, look, we're willing to do more. We stand ready. Will Saudi Arabia essentially do a massive short squeeze if they see prices moving further down? I think OPEC is a very important wild card to see, pay attention to. If there was ever any doubt about Putin and, and uh, that that was one of his cards that he had, it's just so clear now, isn't it, Halima? He's so evil. I, I mean, I'm afraid to say that. I don't want to die, but uh, I mean, just watching this, <laughs> this play out, I mean, it, and we're not talking about the, the atrocities nearly as much. And, and now, you know, he's almost okay. seems like he's comfortable having done all those things. And now he's really going to use the, the economic card. Let me, so 19 degrees. I thought 19 degrees Celsius is where if yeah. you, you could get arrested if you, if you. So 19 times 9 over 5 plus 32 is 66 degrees. So we should go long sweaters for sure in, in Europe. Don't you think, Halima, in, in Germany, we should, we should buy sweater stocks? I mean, to me, the weather story is going to be the biggest factor in terms of whether Europe gets through this. If they have a cold winter, they are going to go through storage very quickly, and there are no additional supplies coming in from Russia in most, you know, almost any circumstance. So the question is, where is the available gas to help supply Europe in a cold winter scenario? And the last thing I'm going to say is Vladimir Putin didn't just threaten to cut off energy supplies. He also said he may not allow Ukraine's grain to go out to market. Remember, there was a deal with Turkey. He basically said we may not allow this to go forward. So we're going to have a food crisis as well. Halima, but, but we don't have the, the SPR. How much are we draining? Are we going to? Is that a mistake? Are we going to be able to, to add it back? Is that why we're at 82? I mean, that has been a key factor in the market right now. We have been releasing you know, close to a million barrels a day from the U.S. SPR. That is keeping this market well supplied. The question is, when this massive release winds down, can we do another one? Do we basically sit back and say, OK, prices are where we need them to be? I mean, there doesn't look like there's a lot of additional tools in the you know, toolkit when it comes to supply responses from the United States. So again, the demand story is really going to be important for the White House if they want lower prices.